and welcome to this tutorial on Schrodinger's wave equation. This is the second part of the tutorial. In this part of the tutorial we're just going to have a look at deriving the equation you can see here. So let's get cracking. If you remember the first part of the previous tutorial, I brought this down into uh, this is the total energy and that's broken down into the kinetic energy plus the potential energy of the system. Another way of writing kinetic energy is to say half mv squared. Okay, we'll leave potential energy because it's just uh, a single value there, V. Now we have to think about this half mv squared so we can actually derive uh, this part of the equation. So another way of writing half mv squared is to say p squared over 2m. And very quickly, um, I'll go through this now, but we'll keep this equation here to one side. So p is a momentum p equals mass times velocity, so p squared equals m squared v squared, so p over 2m, we do p, p squared sorry over 2m is simply another way of writing half mv squared because it's m squared v squared over 2m and if we cancel that out, m's go and we are left with mv squared over 2 which is half mv squared. So this is another way of writing half mv squared. Let's delete these and we're going to use that in a second. So that's one part of the equation that we're going to need so let's just circle that put in a nice fluffy cloud. Another equation we need to, to uh, incorporate is de Broglie's relationship which relates the wavelength to the uh, momentum of a particle, if you will. So another way of writing um, wavelength, let me just undo that. So lambda equals the Planck constant divided by the momentum. And you can write this as momentum equals Planck constant over lambda if you wanted to. So that's going to be another equation we're going to need. Now this is quite quite well suited um, because de Broglie related the mass of a particle to the wavelength of a particle. So you can see how it's all um, incorporated into the same kind of rules, if you will. Another one, uh, another equation we're going to need is the one um, for the wave number. And we remember that from the previous tutorial where we had this value k. Now k is simply 2 pi over lambda. And we're going to need to um, mix up the Broglie relationship with this value as well. So we'll put that in a bubble as well. Another one we're going to need is going to be the value for psi. Now psi equals e to the i kx. We're not determining the time dependent uh, form of this equation. It's a time independent Schrodinger wave equation today. So we're just going to use this part of the wave vector or wave function that we saw in the previous tutorial. So again, let's put that in its own little cloud. Okay, so we've got these four equations that we're going to need. I'm just going to quickly take the second derivative of this uh, equation. So the first derivative with respect to x decide dx equals, well differential of that is i k e to the i k x. Now I'm not going to stop there, I'm going to move on now, put those little moving on arrows, and we're going to take the second derivative, d2 psi dx squared, and that equals, if we put this in brackets, it might be easiest for you to see, we take the derivative of this again, and we'll differentiate this, it gives us ik again, so that'll be ik squared this time, multiplied by e to the i kx, and I'm running out of room there, so I'll bring it down here. Another way of writing that is d2 psi dx squared equals well, i squared, i is the square root of minus 1, 
So i squared equals minus 1, so that's easy enough. So it becomes minus whatever this is going to be, and it's k squared, so it equals minus k squared, so it's minus 1 times k squared, so I've just knocked the 1 off. And then we've got this term e to the i k x again, where if you remember, e to the i k x is just psi, so we can actually say it's e e to the i k x, well, I'll put it in this first time, e to the i k x. And that simplifies down to minus k squared psi. So the other equation I'm going to need is going to be, I'll do it in black, it's going to, I'll just move this down a little bit, it's going to be d2 psi dx squared equals minus k squared psi. Now let's put that in a bubble or cloud. Okay, so I'll delete these now, but that's how you derive that part of the equation. And let's move this important piece up here. Okay, so we've got all the parts of the equations we need, but we now need to put that into here. So we've got e total equals half mv squared plus potential energy. So let's write in a form we can actually use. Let's move that up. I'm trying to keep the clouds so we can see them. So e psi, our total energy, equals... Remember, we write the kinetic energy like this now. So we've got p squared over 2m psi plus v psi. So I've replaced the half mv squared with p squared over 2m, and we'll leave v as it was. So we need to now find values for p squared. Well, we've got these here. So if we manipulate the de Broglie relationship with the wave number, and I'll do that in green... So lambda equals h over p, that's our function there we want actually. And we also know k equals 2 pi over lambda. We've got a k in here as well, and we're going to use that in a second. So if we replace k equals 2 pi over lambda uh, into this equation, so we get, we we'll re rearrange that to give lambda equals 2 pi over of a k, we can substitute that equals that, so that's equal to 2 pi of a k. And if we rearrange for k, we'll bring the k up to the top, h up to the bottom, p up to the that will give us one part of our equation we need, and that's k equals 2 pi over Planck constant multiplied by the uh, momentum of the particle. Now, if I went through that a bit too quickly, and uh, maybe just uh, rewind the video a little bit and have a go at rearranging that equation yourself. So that is one part of the equation we need, but we can simplify this a little bit further because h over 2 pi, I'll just uh, write this up here for now, equals h cross. It's another form, it's called the reduced Planck constant. I'll just delete that. So we can replace that here. So we replace that or simplify it down a bit further to P over H cross or H bar or reduced Planck's constant if you will. So K equals P over H cross. So we're going to need that equation. So I'll keep that to one side as well. And we'll just derive that from the De Broglie relationship on our wave number relationship another cloud around that. This is a should be a different colour cloud really because it's a it's using two of the equations we need before. Okay, so we can get rid of that and that's how we got to that formula. Okay. So we've got values for um, k, we've got values for k squared psi, and we've got the Schrodinger equation here but not in the form we recognise. So we now need to um, work out how we can substitute these values into this equation to give us 
Schrodinger wave equation that we're familiar with. So p squared, if we get this in the form of p here, um, or k squared with plus um, p in here, like this. So k squared, another way of writing k squared equals p squared over h cross squared. We just squared the whole of this equation up here. If we substitute this into this equation here, we get d2 psi dx squared equals minus k squared, so we're substituting in k squared now, p squared over h cross squared psi. Okay, so all we've done is replace k in this equation here, which we derive from the wave uh, function, and we now get it in the form of p. Now we need it in the form of p because we have um, the kinetic energy in the form of its momentum here. So all we need to do now is get the value for this. We're going to substitute this part of the equation. So you can see we've got this here, p squared psi. So all we need to do is rearrange this little equation here a little bit. If I do that, bring the h cross up, we'll um, multiply by minus 1 on both sides. So we end up with the equation minus h cross d2 psi dx squared equals p squared psi. Put that in a little cloud as well. So if we substitute this equation now, it's going to be crowded actually. Move this across because we might need to look at that. But I'll do that, I'll change that to a light blue colour. So it's out of the way. Change that to light blue as well so we don't see it too much. All we need to do now is substitute p squared psi into this equation here. So we're looking at this equation here. Okay. And if we do that, we get, let me just scroll down a little bit. If we do that, we get e psi equals, now we're going to substitute p squared psi, p squared psi, so we've got, it's all over 2m, so minus h cross squared over 2m d2 psi dx squared, that's replacing p squared psi into this equation, plus v psi. Okay, so that is actually the Schrodinger's wave equation, the time independent Schrodinger wave equation for uh, one dimension in the x dimension. And it's as simple as that. It sounded a bit con uh, convoluted, sorry, uh, simply because we had to incorporate the Broglie relationship, we had to think about um, the wave number there, or the special uh, wave number value we used in the original. Um, wave function and that's that plays a, a key role in us being able to actually find uh, where the Schrodinger wave equation in this form as it's very familiar to most people. So that's the derivation of Schrodinger's wave equation. I'll put uh, these tutorial notes up on an epistemic for you to have a look through yourself and please have a go at deriving this uh, in a linear approach like I've tried to do today for yourself. So bye for now. <laughs>